This morning after Election Day, we bring you live post election in depth analysis. We break down what exactly last night's results mean for you as well as future elections. And for that, and on your side, Brett Hall joins us from our digital studio with political analyst Joel Rubin. Brett. Good morning. Yeah, we're here with Joel, former Wavy TV 10 reporter. Now, a person that's watched a lot of elections here. And I think, Joel, if we data mined, which word was probably used most in this election? It was ban. And abortion. And abortion. <laughs> right. And last night, it seems that right now, just in case you're just waking up, House and Senate both are likely going to be in Democratic control by one seat. Right. And I think a lot of people are going to wonder, did it come down to an ad that the Spirit of Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin's PAC, funded. Uh, we have it up right here. You probably remember seeing it. Uh, it was the one in which you saw a lot of the news clips. You saw Danny Diggs, and then you talked to, he talked about there is no ban, 15-week limit. You have advised a lot of people uh -huh. in elections over the years. When Democrats are trying to get you to talk about abortion, is it smart to come on the offense? Well, I think what happened here was that every Democrat was running against the Republicans saying they wanted to ban abortions. And in the mind of clearly the governor, who paid for that ad, I think, right? Mm, yes. In the spirit of Virginia. Yes. It's not a ban. You know, we're still allowing it up to 15 weeks. And actually, most abortions, 90% of abortions happen before 15 weeks. So in many respects, it's a non-issue. But when they say ban, okay, uh, it sure sounds like it. And Youngkin had said, remember there's that quote that said he would gleefully or something would sign a bill that was even more restrictive. Now maybe he doesn't believe it today or yesterday, but he did say it and they are going to hold him to that. And, he, and a lot of voters, women in particular, knew that other bills were going to come out of the legislature more restrictive than 15 weeks. But would you, do you think it's smart to go on the offense like that, to clarify the attacks, or do you just continue to talk about other things? Well, I'm sure they're all talking about that up in Richmond right now and in all the political circles, but clearly it didn't work. In other words, it did not nullify that issue the way it was. And I'm sure they were doing polling that was showing they were getting killed on that issue, on, the, on that three-letter word, ban. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they threw that ad out there. But you're right, it didn't work at the end. All right. We'll have more analysis in our next half hour from the digital studio. Brett Hall and Joel Rubin, 10 on your side. Hi, Brett and Joel, thank you very much for that information. 10 on your side, as you know, is your local election headquarters. If you are just waking up, the results of most races across the Commonwealth are in. The AP projects Democrats won at least 21 seats in the state Senate and at least 51 seats in the House of Delegates. The victories for the Democrats mean Governor Youngkin won't have the trifecta he asked voters for to move his agenda forward. Democrats will have more negotiating power with the governor now that they control both chambers in the General Assembly. It is important to note there are still several races that have not been called, including the big race on the peninsula between State Senator Monty Mason and his Republican opponent, former Sheriff Danny Diggs. Right now, Diggs is in the lead by about a thousand votes. We may have to wait a few days though for that information because provisional ballots and some absentee mail in ballots still need to be counted.